with other instruments offered by, by partners. I'm talking about so far, for example, Argentina, we plan in the future to do collaboration with Israel and so on. Also very important is the fact that we use Cosmos SkyMed as third party contributor to the Copernicus uh, program of the European Space Agency and the European Union. In this way, we offer important strategic and uh, precious data to collect with our constellation, also to other partners, to other producers of data for the benefit of Europe and, uh, and the rest of the world. Talus Alenia Space is our customer for tonight's mission, as well as the prime contractor responsible for the entire system. Here are a few words from their CEO, as well as the CEO of Telespazio, which designed and built the critical ground and in-orbit support and operations. The launch of Cosmos Second Generation Second Satellite is a cornerstone in the entire Cosmos SkyMed program. The program started in 2007 with the launch of the first satellite of the first generation. Thales Arena Space is the prime contractor, and we are proud to bring to space a new systems uh, architecture, technologies, uh, and operational capabilities. Full polarization of the sensor enabled to sense the Earth with unprecedented uh, performance. Agility of the platform uh, is really important uh, to add uh, new operational modes, and ultra-fine resolution is extremely important to monitor the planet. Cosmos KMED is a key program to monitor our planet, to sustain new services and applications, uh, to bring information about the evolution of our planet. For Cosmos KMED second generation, Telespazio provides digital ground segment integrated logistics support and maintenance in operating condition. Right after the launch, we will take care of the injection of the satellite in the final orbit and in orbit testing. Through EGEOS, our subsidiaries that we have established with the Italian Space Agency, we have in charge the, re the, re the receiving, the processing and the distribution of data worldwide. Cosmos SkyMed second generation is a true generational leap in technology. Through its performances, we will feed our applications and it will be a great contribution for the sustainability of the environment. We are currently T minus six minutes from liftoff of the Falcon 9 carrying the Cosmos SkyMed satellite and we're progressing into the final stages of the launch countdown. Now, the two-stage Falcon 9 vehicle stands 229 feet tall or slightly taller than a 21-story building. That bottom two-thirds of the vehicle is the first stage. Its objective is to accelerate the vehicle through the Earth's atmosphere to space and then separate from the rest of the vehicle. Above the first stage is the second stage, which has a single Merlin vacuum or MVAC engine, which ignites after the first stage separates. And the second stage is what will carry the Cosmos SkyMed satellite to a polar sun synchronous orbit. Now you'll notice at the top of the vehicle, what you're seeing on your screen is the fairing. Uh, and this is where we uh, hold our payload. Uh, it's safely enclosed inside of that payload fairing in front of you on your screen. And that is made of a carbon composite material. The fairing protects satellites on the way to orbit. Now the fairing uh, is jettisoned approximately three minutes into flight. And finally, the large trusted structure that you see there to the left of the, the vehicle. For back retract. That is the TE to the left of the vehicle on your screen. Now we use that to roll the vehicle out to the pad and raise it to its vertical launch position. The TE also routes the vehicle's fluids, power, and telemetry umbilicals from the ground systems to the rocket and satellites until Falcon 9 goes on internal power and clears the pad. At liftoff, it will retract in order to clear the way for Falcon 9's ascent. And we're currently waiting for the TE retraction, and in preparation for that, the TE clamps will begin to open, which we should, which you should he see here. Actually, you can see it on your screen now. Those clamp arms just below the fairing are starting to open up. Once that completes, then the TE can finally retract away from the vehicle. 
Looks like the clamp arms have completed. Now the TE should start moving slowly away from the vehicle. The first stage is connected to a launch mount at the base of the TE, in the, but the structure is hinged and then will retract away from the vehicle in preparation for launch. And it's very slight, but that TE is moving away from the vehicle there on your screen. Now, at this point in the countdown, both the first and second stages are nearly fully loaded with one million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. Both first stage and second stage should finish prop loading at about a minute apart from each other. Uh, first stage should finish up at T minus three minutes and second stage at T minus two minutes. And you can see some white clouds around Falcon stage 9. One lock load is complete. We hear that call out, stage one locks load complete. Those white clouds around Falcon 9 is when the liquid oxygen meets the warmer ambient air in Florida there and condenses the air around it, causing those white clouds. At T minus 60 seconds, Falcon 9 will be in startup. That means that the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers have taken over the launch countdown. Just inside T minus two seconds, we light the Merlin M1D engines for liftoff. The Cosmos Sky Med satellite continues to be healthy and the Falcon 9 team is tracking no issues on the vehicle. Weather is still looking great. Some clear blue skies there over at Cape Canaveral and the range is green for launch. So with that, we are proceeding into the last few minutes of the terminal count. As you can see on your screen, we've got some great weather over there. We're coming up on the completion of prop load on second stage. Stage two, lock load is complete. And with that last call out, prop load is now complete on both stages. With that, you'll see some venting and you can kind of see it on your screen there. We are now venting out the liquid oxygen that is in the lines on the transporter erector. That basically just clears the lines. There, you can get a good view of that. And then the next event will be the internal flight computers taking over the launch countdown about 15 seconds or so from now. Once the computers take over, they will execute stored programs and prepare the vehicle for liftoff. Falcon 9 is in startup. And great call out there. Falcon 9 is in startup now, just waiting the final call from the launch director here in a few seconds. Go for launch. Excellent news here. All systems are go for launch. So let's listen into the terminal count and watch as Falcon 9 transports the Cosmos SkyMed satellite into orbit. T minus 30 seconds. T minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition and liftoff. In Volca El Lupo. Go Falcon, go Cosmo. Vehicle is pitching downrange. M1D chamber pressures are nominal. Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Pad 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, carrying the Cosmos SkyMed satellite to a polar sun synchronous orbit. Power and telemetry nominal. Now during ascent, we tilt the engines and that's what we call gimbling. And that turns the rocket horizontally. That's what we call a gravity turn. We're still going up, 
but we're now also heading horizontally away from the launch pad. The rocket typically needs to go Falcon about... Falcon 9 is supersonic. We need to go about 17,500 miles per hour horizontally in order to avoid being pulled back down to Earth. Max Q. And there we heard the call out for Max Q. We have now passed through the maximum aerodynamic pressure. This is the largest structural load on the vehicle. And with that, we do have five events coming up back to back. They'll happen within seconds of each other. And these events include the first stage uh, making its way back to landing zone one today. So we'll have Miko, main engine cutoff, stage separation, a flip of the first stage, SES-1, or second stage engine and start one, burn. and then followed immediately by the boost back burn on the first stage. Again, that's five events happening within seconds of each other. We should get some good views of these happening. Again, that is Miko, stage separation, S1 Vehicles flip. on a nominal trajectory. Good call outs there. So stage one flip, SES-1, and the boost back burn coming up here in a few seconds. Nico. Stage separation confirmed. And back ignition. Stage one, boost back startup. And some incredible views from the ground cameras. We actually got to visually see Miko stage separation and see the first stage flip on your screen. That was incredible to see. Now what you're seeing on your screen on the left-hand side is the first stage uh, currently in its boost back burn. That is the first of three burns to make its way back to land. And on your right-hand screen, we do have the second stage engine lit up and so far looking really good on nominal trajectory. Stage one, boost back, shut down. And we heard that call out that the boost back burn has ended. Now in a few seconds here, we should see the fairing halves on the second stage being deployed. We've got some awesome views here. The left-hand screen is showing the first stage with the grid fins deploying on your screen. Bearing separation confirmed. And we heard that call out and visual confirmation on your right-hand screen that the fairing halves have deployed. They're now making their way back to Earth and we will attempt to recover them with our recovery vessel named Bob today. Incredible views today. Got some great ground views of the vehicle as it is making its ascent. And we are T plus four minutes and 23 seconds into today's mission. And we're currently in the first of two planned MVAC burns for satellite deployment. Now at T plus six minutes and 11 seconds, you should see on your screen the first stage's entry burn. That entry burn will be the second of three burns needed to make its way back to landing zone one today. And for the entry burn, we relight three of the nine M1D engines. And that starts with the center E9 engine followed by the E1 and E5 engines. And that helps to slow the vehicle down as it passes back into the Earth's atmosphere. And we need to slow the vehicle down to reduce... Both vehicles continue to follow nominal trajectories. Great call-outs. Everything's looking nominal. And for that entry burn, we do need to slow down the, the vehicle uh, to reduce the re-entry forces. Uh, that helps us to recover and reuse the first stage. You can see on your left-hand screen those grid fins that opened up. Those help to guide the vehicle back as it makes its way to its landing target. And again, today we are attempting to land at landing zone one. This is back at land. We need three burns to get us there. We've already completed the boost back burn and we're coming up on the entry burn here in just under 30 seconds. Stage two is still looking great. 
On your right-hand screen is a view of the MVAC engine on the second stage. Stage one, entry burn startup. We heard the call out, and you can visually see on your screen that the entry burn has begun on the first stage. Again, this helps to slow the vehicle down as it re-enters back into the Earth's atmosphere. It's only about a 20-second burn. Stage one, entry burn shut down. And we heard that call out for entry Stage burn. Stage two, FTS has saved. We heard the call out that the entry burn has completed, and you can see that the engines have shut down on your left-hand screen. That is two of the three burns. The last burn will be the landing burn. You can see in the background Stage of your left. Stage one, FTS has saved. <laughs> you the can... vehicles are on nominal trajectories. Good call outs there. And you can see the land in the background view of the first stage as it's making its way back to landing zone one. Stage one, transonic. Stage one, landing burn. And the landing burn, wow, incredible views of this landing burn of this first stage. Let's see if we can touch down on landing zone one today. Stage one, landing like the floor. And what an incredible sight to see. We have touchdown of Falcon 9 at landing zone one. This is our 104th recovery of an orbital class Terminal rocket. Guidance. And that includes first stage landings for both Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. And speaking of Falcon Heavy, today's flight marks the first time that we have reconfigured a Falcon Heavy side booster to a Falcon 9 mode, which is pretty awesome. Now, next up, we will have the shutdown of the MVAC on the second stage. It's coming here in about 10 seconds, and that is called Seco 1, or second stage engine cutoff 1. Seco 1. Just heard that call out for Seco 1, just waiting for Nominal a call. orbit insertion. And there it is. We got a confirmation of good orbit. Now the mission isn't over just yet. The second stage is now embarking on its first coast phase. And after the coast phase, we will light that MVAC engine for a second time around T plus 56 minutes. So we'll see you back here in about 45 minutes. And in the meantime, enjoy the space tunes.